right, time to watch me some classic turtle. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning some filmmaking and learn good. Today, we're following up on our Scarlet Witch Effect from last week, as tons of you asked for the Scarlet Witch Effect, but didn't actually specify which one. She attacks with her energy, and she also messes with people's heads with some, you know, mind control. So I thought I'd take it upon myself to make an episode on both. In order to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor performing and have another actor cast a spell on them. Now, I didn't have anyone around when I shot this at 6.30 in the morning, so I just thought I stuck my hand on the shot and masked it out later. You also need to download the project file in the description as we'll be using the same particles from last week with a couple of minor tweaks. So you will need Trap Code Particular once again. I'm sorry guys, but sometimes you have to embrace the fact that the third party plugin works better. Now let's get to work. Okay guys, here we are and once again I have my comp set up and ready to go. Our first step is gonna be to bring in the downloaded project file, open up the comp marked energy, copy the solid marked energy within that comp, and then paste it on top of our footage layer. Now since the solid isn't the same length as our comp, rather than drag it out, all we're gonna do is position it on the comp when our hand comes on screen first. There we go. Now before we continue, let's do that tweaking to the particles I mentioned before. Let's scrub back to the start of our solid, and then we'll hit the stopwatch on particles and change the amount to 200. We'll then head to the point just before we launch them out, add another keyframe, then scrub forward a few frames until they cross our actor's face, and then we'll set them down to zero. Now our last tweak just before we animate is heading down to physics and setting the gravity to minus 100. This will make our particles just a little more floaty. From there, we're gonna animate the position X, Y, just like last week to match our hand movements. Here we go, like so. And once we get to the point of launching that energy, we'll then stretch out the position point so that our particles slowly float away. Hmm. For me though, those particles aren't spreading out enough after launch. So here's how we fix that. If we head to our launch point here, you can see that the emitter size Y, that's over here, is 150 right now. So what we'll do is we'll hit the stopwatch, move four frames forward, and then crank it up to 575. Our particles will now spread out like smoke dispersing. It's a beautiful thing. Now guys, you can also adjust the emitter X, Y, and Z if you need to, to better suit your hands in the shot. Let's now check out a preview. Pretty cool, eh? Okay, that's our particles done. Now let's make those fingertips all glowy and magical. So guys, I'm gonna level with you here. This one is tedious, but it is really easy. First off, let's head up and grab a new adjustment layer. From there, we'll head over to presets and type Vibrance. And let's add Video Copilot's Color Vibrance plugin. If you don't have this one, click the link in the description and go get it. It's free and it's very handy. Now let's tweak this bad boy. First off, we're gonna change the color to a red. One might even say scarlet. We'll then bump the vibrance down to 0.49 and the gamma up to 1.35. Now you're probably saying, well, that's all very red. Well, it's not gonna stay that way. So just settle down and eat some fruit. Let's now scrub along the timeline until we get to the point where our hand is fully stretched out. And this is nice. We'll then grab the pen tool and proceed to draw a mask around each of our fingertips. If you have to combine two fingers in one mask, it's cool, I had to do it as well. Once all of our masks are done, let's collapse down the mask menu and feather each out around 30 pixels or so. We'll then hit the stopwatch on mask path on each individual mask. Now since we're three quarters away through our launch, I'm going to go forward frame by frame, matching my masks with the movement of my fingers. Once I get to the end, I'm gonna head backwards and adjust the mask until I reach the beginning of the shot. Now trust me when I say this guys, it does take a little while to get this done. I think it took me around about 18 minutes in total and that was just rushing it. I would really encourage you to take your time and really get this thing done right. Cause if you go super detailed with this, the end result is gonna look so much better. The end result of the animation should look like this. One last step here is to animate the opacity of our glowing fingers, just so they fade away once our energy's been launched. So let's head to our launch point once more, hit T to bring up our opacity settings, hit the stopwatch, skip 10 to 12 frames or so, and then crank it down to zero. Let's check out our preview now. 
Uh-huh. It's looking very good, Mr. Simpson. So that's our particles done. Now we move on to the eyes. The eyes are next and they're really easy, guys. Our first step is to duplicate our footage layer. We'll then head along the timeline until the point just after our energy is hit. Hit Control shift d to split that clip. We'll then delete that first part. Head along the timeline until the hand is completely off screen and then we'll trim it back again, like so. We'll then jump back to the start of the clip, head up, grab the ellipse tool, this one here, and then we'll draw a nice circle shape around the center of our eye, kind of like a contact lens. We'll then move it and adjust it into place if you need to. Now I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna duplicate that mask and put it right on top of the other eye. And since we're in After Effects CC, all I'm gonna do here is right click on the mask, select Track Mask, head over to this guy and hit the play button. And bam, our mask path is now animated. I'll then rinse and repeat this for the other eye. Now remember, if you're on CS6 or lower, you will have to animate the mask path by hand since they don't have this cool shortcut. So that sucks. Now that we have our masks, let's change some settings. Collapse down the mask menu and feather both out around 12 pixels. We'll then change the mask expansion to minus four. Why are we doing this? Well, I'll explain after our next step. To color these eyes, we're gonna head up to effect, color correction and add two things, hue and saturation and gamma pedestal gain. We'll dial the hue around until we find a red color. That looks good. We'll then bump that saturation up to around 30 to 40. We'll then head down to gamma pedestal gain and bump that red gain up to 1.7 and the gamma up to 0.1. So now you can see, with the feathering and the mask reduction settings made, the red color kinda bleeds into the eye rather than being completely full of it, unlike me of course. Now, time to add a little glow. Let's select our eye layer, right click, select pre-compose, making sure we leave all attributes in this composition. Let's then head up to effect, stylize and add a glow. Time to change just a few things. Let's change the threshold to 77, the radius to 30, and the intensity to 1.8. Now that's looking pretty good. Now for the last step, gang. Let's head back to the first frame of our eye layer, hit T, hit the stopwatch on opacity, and crank it down to zero. We'll then move forward 10 frames and crank it up to 100. Skip ahead around 20 more frames, add another keyframe. Skip ahead around 20 more, and crank it down to zero once more. And let's check out a preview of our final shot. Hmm, methinks we are done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. All right, time to watch me some classic turtle. <laughs> so that's my take on Scarlet Witch's mind control. If you watched last week, we really didn't have to modify our initial effect too much and changing the eye color, it ain't rocket science. That said, it once again emphasizes my point that even if I show you a way to make an effect, there's always some way you can play with it to turn it into something new. Experiment with the effects and you never know, you might discover it looks even better. But once again, that's my time guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, there's a subscribe button here that's lonely, single and considering speed dating. So why not give it some love? You can also hit me up on Facebook and Twitter for previews of upcoming content. Hey guys, this is Akesta, and until next week, keep learning.